Throughout the past 100 years, African livestock farmers have faced a real threat as they fought to improve the productivity of their cattle. Ticks are one of the greatest constraints on livestock production in Africa. As well as direct damage caused by blood loss, they also transmit a number of devastating diseases. Since the turn of the century, ticks and their associated diseases have largely been controlled by the regular use of acaricides in the form of cattle dips and sprays. Following in the tradition of William Cooper, dedicated animal health companies such as Cooper's, Mallinckrodt Veterinary and Herxt have continued to help livestock farmers understand and practice effective tick control. But today, tick control is no longer the only solution. The creation and maintenance of immunity to these diseases is considered by many to be a more desirable option. Immunization and natural immunity can both be used to decrease the reliance placed upon tick control. So what are the factors which influence the policy makers? And how will these new concepts affect the commercial farmer and rural livestock owner? A farmer is a very difficult person to convince if he does not see real benefit. So benefit, as far as possible, should be tangible or visible or demonstrable. So where we have had a long history of dipping, we find people appreciate that dipping is really useful for them. Most of our national dairy herd is found in the high rainfall areas where we have got good grazing. And also, unfortunately, this is the area where we have got the, the ticks and mainly the three-host tick. And we are afraid that uh, if we get resistance to all the acaricides we have, then obviously the dairy animal we have will be wiped out because most of the dairy animals we have are imported exotic animals. The control of ticks is not a sustainable option anymore. Um, it is very difficult for these countries to buy insecticide, foreign currency is short. Uh, it's becoming more difficult to apply it effectively uh, because of resistance, uh, but also because of problems in actually getting the insecticide safely uh, to the dips or the spray races, using it accurately. In the next few minutes, many of these issues will be addressed in an attempt to present all sides of this debate. What is the future of tick control in Africa? In recent years, substantial resources have been ploughed into the development of a greater understanding of the tick-borne disease problem and how these diseases can be more effectively controlled. The different levels of susceptibility between indigenous, exotic and crossbred cattle are now better understood, as are variations in the distribution of the different tick species and their associated diseases. These factors all play a part in determining the level of tick control, which can now vary widely. Historically, intensive dipping regimes began at the turn of the century, when highly productive but susceptible exotic cattle were introduced into Africa. Regular dipping was essential in order to prevent disease transmission by ticks. This method of tick control helped to minimize mortality and loss of productivity. Damage to teats, udders, genitals, ears and hides was also reduced. Gradually, this method of intensive tick control also spread to indigenous breeds. Ticks suck blood from these animals and by so doing they actually weaken them. Animals in the local environment are used for multiple purposes. Basically, the major aspect of livestock is to provide draft power. So if the animals are weak from tick-borne diseases, they won't be able to provide draft power. Ticks cause wounds, and at times you find that our farmers sometimes don't see the wounds, so they would end up with screw, screw and building up. The opportunity to inspect the animals at the dip has been invaluable for disease control. And the dip tank forms the central place where uh, all cattle activities are done. 
such as disease surveillance, treatment of cattle, and so on. And uh, I think it's, it's a, it is an important focal point for disease control. The original cattle dip chemicals effective against the tick were based on arsenic, which could be poisonous for both cattle and people. Now, newer chemicals exist, which are safe and offer longer periods of residual activity. In addition, new methods of application have been developed, which provide practical alternatives to the traditional dip or spray race. The flexibility offered by hand sprays and pour-ons is making them increasingly popular, especially with small-scale farmers. In contrast, when treating large numbers of cattle in communal dips, the total replenishment TR method using Amitraz is particularly valuable. Yes, we ensure that dipping is effective because we are using a total replenishment strategy at our dip tanks. Uh, and we fill up the dip tank uh, and we know that that acaricide is 100% effective during that day. New opportunities exist with modern synthetic pyrethroids, such as deltamethrin and cyhalothrin, which have the added advantage of killing nuisance and biting flies, as well as ticks. We have actually got areas which have got a problem of ticks, at the same time also with a problem of sesa flies. And we have found that in such areas, the use of deltamethrin works very well for both controlling the ticks and the sesa flies. Such dual control strategies can offer considerable practical advantages. A second approach to tick-borne disease control relies on the use of vaccines. And this integrated control is using several methods which are economically viable in combination. So the, the actual control becomes more robust. And we are talking about still using uh, a caricide or insecticidal control for the vector but bringing in new vaccines, bringing in um, new methods of handling diseases, uh, either by uh, tick or disease-resistant cattle, or actually bringing in management of the ecology of the disease, what we call endemic stability of the diseases. Where vaccines are not yet fully developed, more novel methods of immunization can be employed. East Coast fever immunization relies on this approach. We are using the method known as infection treatment method. And that method means applying the parasite and a drug like oxytetocycline to kind of slow up the multiplication of the parasite. And the, with the work we have done, particularly the coast, with small scale farmers, everybody seems to be quite happy. And um, we, we, we feel we can protect as much as 99% of the cattle. With the development of highly effective drugs such as bupavacone, imidacarb and diminazine, the farmer now has a third possibility. Tick-borne diseases including talleriosis, babesiosis and anaplasmosis can now be treated. Even if an outbreak of disease does occur, it can now be controlled. A truly integrated approach will rely on the use of immunization backed up by chemotherapeutic drugs to treat those cattle that still develop the disease. This will allow governments and private farmers the possibility of choosing from a number of different levels of tick control. Intensive, strategic or threshold. Intensive dipping. This involves following a strict regime of tick control at regular intervals. Up to two times a week with organophosphates, but less frequently with newer chemicals such as amidines and synthetic pyrethroids. The aim is to reduce tick numbers so that damage and disease transmission is minimal. Strategic dipping. This involves starting treatment just before the seasonal rise in tick numbers. A caricide application intervals remain unaltered during this period of high challenge. To be effective, a good understanding of the biology of the tick species in the area must exist, and extension services should ensure that this information reaches the farmer. As far as um, strategic tick control is concerned, as you know from the history of tick control in Africa particularly, for many, many years, 90 years in fact, 
They've been, farmers that is, have been convinced that they must control ticks every week, sometimes twice a week. With the new techniques and the vaccines available, then it will be safe to reduce that level or intensity of tick control to strategic, as we call it, which is seasonal, based on the abundance of adult ticks, which are the most damaging. A third option is threshold control, where treatment is only applied when the number of ticks on the animal exceeds the level which would cause unacceptable economic loss. This is often difficult to estimate and varies with different breeds of cattle and different tick species. Whatever level of control and whichever method is adopted, a well thought out and well executed acaricide policy will remain absolutely vital. Trying to decide which option to follow is complex and will vary according to a number of conditions. But it's almost certain that the same advice cannot be implemented throughout a country. International research organizations are investigating whether computer modeling can help with decision making for tick control. It's fine to look at um, a countrywide type of model that might predict something that you're, you're interested in, but you may very well be interested in looking at a very specific region, say where your farm is. In that case, you can just, you can just have the system zoom in on that specific area and, and get a very more, much more detailed look at what's happening. Some of the models we're developing might really help you know at what type of risk your cattle herds are, are under in a specific season or, or month of the year. So in that case, it would, could really help you to decide when you dip or when not to dip, in fact. Advanced technology will only be relevant if it's applied at farmer level. Therefore, an effective farmer education policy is vital. The farmer will benefit from being informed about new ideas and advice as to which method will be most appropriate for his cattle. But there are problems in getting the message across to uh, the, the smallholder, uh, and it's really the smallholder that is going to be the beneficiary in the long run of these improved technologies. And I think it's up to the veterinary services, it's up to the private practitioner. Uh, as the private practice grows, it's up to the Kenya Veterinary Association or similar associations in other countries to become involved in trying to get this extension message uh, delivered effectively. And once we have got the um, method in place and working, then we shall go out in full force to say it. It is the responsibility of the directors of veterinary services in collaboration with us and other institutions that are working in this area to save these methodologies to the farmer. To realize the cost-benefit effects of application of a caricide, we require quite a lot of uh, extension work. And this is why for those people who um, supply a caricide, the suppliers, we expect of them to do some part backup service. And that will actually go hand in hand with the extension. In order to provide cost-effective solutions for farmers, partnerships need to be formed between governments, scientists, veterinarians, and the animal health companies. As farmers are now having to pay more for animal health services, private companies are expected to play their part in developing education packages alongside governments. The control of ticks and tick-borne disease has to be looked at cost-effectively. Uh, one is concerned about the costs of vaccines. And at this moment of time, cattle prices are increasing, cattle are worth more, and it's still very cost-effective to dip cattle. So I think one has to keep a balance, an open mind. Looking at the future, of course, we have realized that uh, acaricides are becoming more and more expensive. Uh, at present, we are evaluating a vaccine for East Coast fever, and uh, the results we have got so far are quite promising. So we hope that in the future, we shall combine vaccination together with other methods of tick control, like uh, use of chemicals. Now is the time for an active debate, because the future of Africa's livestock will depend on the decisions taken. I think... You know, every situation will be different. 
and there is no overall or global answer to whether or not you will need tick control. Definitely you will need tick control, but the level and the type will depend on the farming system. If it works, don't fix it. Now, that is particularly applicable to tick control in Zimbabwe because over the last 90 years, it's been very effective. I believe that they've got to be extremely cautious with the reduction in dipping from a fairly intensive situation to a more relaxed strategic uh, approach because the vector is out there and sooner or later, as happened in Zambia, in areas where they had the vector but not the disease, it was introduced and then you can get a very explosive situation. Having in mind that um, East Coast fever or theridiosis is not new to Zambia, but it was only until 1978 that we experienced the disease in the southern province of Zambia. So we had to take the advantage of going into the new area to do the immunization trials. Having integrated dipping to control the ticks and then vaccinate against this one particular disease, we still have a number of other diseases. So we still encourage farmers to dip at um, certain intervals. There is no way we are going to do our work with uh, dip tanks. That is a combination of trying to control the ticks because they are carrying some other diseases. And I still strongly feel that um, the two approaches will still run concurrently for a long time to come. Mallinckrodt Veterinary and Herxt believe that they can continue to play an active part in helping the African farmer to keep healthy, productive cattle. They have the products and the people to contribute to the future of livestock in Africa. Old traditions, rising costs, new techniques. These are the issues which will provide the basis for future decisions on tick and tick-borne disease control. It's then up to government, veterinarians and farmers to make those decisions work effectively.